He's a degenerate gambler. You are a smelly pirate hooker. And he's cheaper than oxygen. He's useless. But somehow, they make it work. Jeremy Green. Tank Spencer. There's no holding back in the sportsocracy. Presented by Ingalls Supermarkets. And welcome back into the Sportocracy Hour 2 right here in the Ingalls studio on ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, and 1400. And, of course, the Sportocracy heard everywhere live or on demand on the iHeartRadio app and seen everywhere on YouTube. Just go to thesportocracy.com, click on that live video link, and subscribe to the channel. So you can get in on the chat and have fun with us. Jeremy will, you know, he'll use animal references that may not be, you know, safe for for others. I may not be able to say them into this microphone. I mean, I can't say them in the chat. <laughs> uh, Super Bowl week. The uh, tonight is opening night. It's opening night. They've got all of the 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 media availability for the Cincinnati Bengals and the L.A. Rams players all beginning tonight. Seven days of commercial field football. And, uh, oh, the commercials. The commercials are already starting to leak oh. out. Commercial Watch 2022. I just don't care. I don't even kind of. That's one of those things that people, oh, what'd you think of the commercials? I don't know. I was in the potty yeah i I was watching the game when the commercials happen that is the time that i go to the refrigerator or the bathroom yeah seven million dollars now for a 30 second spot at the super bowl it's that's crazy to me that's a lot it's a whole lot of money but with the numbers that the nfl playoff games have been pulling in you can bet that's going to be even higher number next year oh yeah Uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you're going to have 150 million people watch this game. And I have been shocked. I have been shocked at some of the reactions to the to the matchup that we have. There are more people in that you know, football fans in general that are upset about the matchup that we have in the Super Bowl than I ever thought there would be. Why would you I don't understand why you would be upset by the I don't either. This is tremendous. They're great stories on either side of the ball. Somebody asked me yesterday, we went down to Elevation Church and we were hanging out and one of my buddies uh came up to me and he was like, "What do you think about the what do you think about the Super Bowl? Who are you pulling for?" And I said, "I really don't know." Oh, I know exactly. Because what part I'm of me about. wants to see Cincinnati win it for Cincinnati fans. And then the other side of me goes, "I'm going to have to put up with my wife." If Matt Stafford loses, because that's her favorite player, was when he was at Georgia and okay, I I gotta want good things for Matthew. You you Georgia people have got enough this year, okay? <laughs> All right, I can tell you exactly who I'm rooting for. The Cincinnati Bengals. Just because right, you want you want them to pound it home, you've never been or will ever be as wrong about a team as you ever, are this year, ever no. in the history of time, right? Between the two of us, we had them in a combined three wins this year preseason, and now they're in the Super Bowl. And one of the things that has led them to this point is what I feel is a very underrated defense. And not only the defensive personnel are overrated as a whole, but they're coaching. I mean, in the last four weeks, their second half adjustments have shut down Patrick Mahomes twice. And befuddled the Raiders and the Titans. They have. And and I'm going to be really honest with you. I have broken down why that is. And there is going to be a battle of wills in this game that I haven't heard anybody talk about. Okay. Just because I'm curious. In the playoffs, what do you think the QBR of quarterbacks in the first half has been against this Bengals defense? Um, I'm going to guess... 62. Uh, 69. Okay. What That's do you close. think it is in the second half or overdone? Well, I know it's got to be It's got to be way less. So, uh, I mean, is it like 30-something? It's nine. Nine? It's nine. Wow. Now, conversely, what is Matthew Stafford's QBR in the fourth quarter this season? Oh, in the fourth quarter all season? Uh, 67. 83.4. Highest in the NFL. Really? So here you're going to have a convergence of things happening. Cincinnati figures you out as time goes on. You mm-hmm. just watched them do it to Pat Mahomes. Absolutely. Pat Mahomes eviscerated them at times in the first half. 
What did they do in the second half to fix that? Because it was real simple. There was no higher level adjustment. It was, well, let's try this. And then it worked, and mm-hmm. they just kept doing it. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about them dropping eight? They stopped rushing him. They stopped rushing him. Mm-hmm. Still got home, but they stopped sending extra extra blitzers. Because quarterbacks like Pat Mahomes, they watch that, especially if it's a delay blitz. But if it's a blitz that you tip before the, before the ball snapped, he knows that's coming. And that's what he picked him apart with in the first half. So they just stopped. Mm-hmm. Now, he, there's, a, there's a blessing and a curse to this. Matthew Stafford, historically, has not been great against teams that do that. Okay. Except this year. Really? Cover one and cover three are the predominant coverages you see from the Cincinnati Bengals. Mm-hmm. How many quarterbacks in the NFL have been better against those two coverages than Matthew Stafford? One. Uh, you want to hear the uh, hear the list again? Oh, none. Uh, it's zero. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be a great test of wills. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you have to give a little bit of an advantage to the Rams, but I I could argue this is the best set up team to stop what the Rams do that they played all year. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing, the teams that the Rams have lost to all year, you know what they do really well what get pressure with four arizona cardinals tennessee titans san francisco 49ers twice green bay packers Mm -hmm. they all get pressure with four cincinnati in these playoffs has gotten pressure with four sam hubbard has been pro bowl level in these playoffs well hell against kansas city they were getting pressure with three they had three and the spy and they were getting after it. Now, obviously, I don't think you're going to need a spy for this game. Uh, Matthew no. Stafford's Matthew not going Stafford anywhere. Matthew Stafford in a foot race would lose to a bar of soap. <laughs> right. So, eh, not too worried about that. Right. I mean, he is as athletic as the uh, as the Statue of Liberty. Correct. So, you're not going to need the spy in this one. So, you can... I think I, I think everything's opened up for... How do you say his name? Lou Amorosa? A- Amor- Amoruso? Uh, no, you're adding a syllable. Am I? Uh, it's... Anarumo. Anarumo. And I okay. don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm really bad at pronouncing names in case you haven't figured that out. The reason right. I don't even try. Right. That's why I have a philosophy. If you want me to say it that yeah. way, spell it that way. But I'll, I mean, we'll just, we'll just for the for the purpose of this conversation, call him Lou. Lou's been doing a fantastic job of he making has. those second half adjustments. And he's been doing it pretty much all year long. It's just really stuck out in the last four games since week 17 of being able to put the clamps on some of the best offenses in the NFL. And you just have to look at the way Cincinnati defensively is set up. They have a high-level playmaker at all three levels. Jesse Bates is as good a safety as there is in the NFL. No doubt. That's not new information. Now, he's been better in this system than he had ever, than he had ever been before. Mm-hmm. It's not new. And I would argue that... One of the things that I have always valued to mess with Matthew Stafford is showing him something that's not coming. If you can get him to start second-guessing what he's seeing, that's when he unravels. Mm -hmm. Now, Cincinnati does not do a ton of that. A ton of show blitz and bail out. Or show nothing and then send blitzers from everywhere. But I don't think you have to. If Sam Hubbard plays at the level he's played at in these playoffs... I have absolutely no fear of this this Rams line. No. Because you got Trey Hendrickson on the other side that's going to be productive. That's why you paid him the money. I was wrong. I thought he was a product of New Orleans. You and being on the other side of Cam Jordan, well, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. He's a phenomenal high-end pass rusher. But what nobody talks about is DJ Reader and BJ Hill on the inside. Mm-hmm. Because one of the things that when you have two ends like that, that, that just bear down the way those two do, the way to beat that, delays draws screen passes those two have allowed none of that and one of the things that not a lot of people talk about and i said this in the preseason and it has bared itself out all year long sean McVay does not want to throw the ball 40 times that's not it's not his mission statement everybody thinks that this rams team is so high flying Mm -hmm. and oh they just throw it all no they don't no they don't it's a myth What, what 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 is there do you have the breakdown in front of you of percentage because i 
we and we talked about this in the preseason is that everybody's got this misconception and i think up until the beginning of this year it was something like i, I want to say it was like 80 percent of the time they ran the ball more than other teams in the nfl i have the breakdown but right my computer is just sitting here and, that, and that's fine uh, you know we we don't necessarily need that i just for all that they've been through this year with the running back room for the LA Rams, they've never they've never stopped running the ball. It didn't matter if it was Sony Michelle or Daryl Henderson, and now that Cam Akers is back, he adds a new fold in there, and it's 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 a team that you should be scared of. It's a sixty forty split. Sixty forty, okay. But Matthew Stafford is not a play action quarterback. Mm-hmm. I don't see the, the the run game of the Rams being any form of issue for the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. I don't either. I, d- I don't. If you and that's one of the stats that I look at in this game and tell if you could tell me how many yards do the Rams run for in this game, and I can make it about as simplistic as humanly possible. They rush for over hundred yards. They're probably going to win this game. Mm-hmm. They rush for less than hundred yards. I would say the Bengals probably win this game. If they cannot find a way to attack them in the run game, and you gotta understand, the Bengals have two of the best run stuffers in this league in the middle of that defense. Mm-hmm. If they can't find a way to do that and it becomes this easy to figure out what they're doing, there is no play action with Matthew Stafford. If I'm not, and don't quote me on the stat because I don't remember the exact percentage. If I'm not mistaken, he runs play action less than any quarterback in the NFL. And it's by a drastic margin. Yeah. You take out all the guesswork. And so now it just becomes hat on a hat. Be really honest with yourself. How many players for the Rams are you legitimately worried about? Oh, I mean, I'm worried about Matthew. I'm worried about... I'm talking about the weapons. Oh, you're... Yeah, yeah. I'm worried about Cooper Cup. There's one. Worried about OBJ. I'm not really worried about Odell Beckham. Why not? I'm not. I'm just not. Man, he's come on lately. And I understand that. It's too easy to mitigate. Mm-hmm. If you look at how he has hurt teams, I have the great elixir to that right over the top. Jesse With Jesse Bates. Bates, yeah. I have the great elixir to that. Now, does that mean Cooper Cup's going to get me? Yeah, it does. It, it absolutely does. And what are you going to do about Tyler Higby? I'm not overly worried about it. To be really? Honest. No. Okay. No, I'm not. If, if, if I was from a strategic st- standpoint – Game planning this out. I'm going to stop Odell Beckham Jr. Mm-hmm. Cooper Cup, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw Mike Hilton on him and hope for the best. <laughs> try to keep him in front of me. Right. But the one thing I don't think Cincinnati can do is try to go single high, of which they run single high more than practically any team in the NFL. I don't think that's going to work for you. But as I dug into the numbers and I dug into the film on this, I think the cover three numbers are misleading. Okay. A lot of the time when Matthew Stafford has been able to attack that, it's been against teams that aren't good at it. San Francisco. How often does San Francisco run three high? It's a lot. It's a lot, Mm -hmm. and he was not particularly good against them two of the three times. Right. Now, did he have success doing it? Yeah. Yeah, he did. But not against teams that run it as much as Cincinnati. Mm Mm-hmm. I think there is more of an advantage for the Bengals when their defense is on the field than people want to let on. Okay. I mean, it's it's hard to say that because you see the star power. You see Mm -hmm. the star power and you see the names that we're used to on the other side. And you go, man, the Rams just have it this year. We talked about over and over. They've gone all in. They got all all the weapons that they possibly could find. They brought in OBJ. And in the last, what, I think he scored six games in a row. Is that right? Odell Beckham Jr. scored six games in a row. There's just something to this offense now where Matthew Matthew Stafford has all of the options available to him, and they've been running the ball well. And my question is, can the Bengals get after him? The Rams, the Rams statistically are the number one pass blocking line in the NFL. And there's one thing that has gotten them a good number of times. And Scott Cutchall, our resident Cincinnati Bengals fan, mm-hmm. just said it. 
Mike Hilton's one of the best blitzing corners in this league coming out of that slot position. You know what's messed with the Rams more than once this year? Blitzing a corner out of the slot. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do it a lot to alter the way they call the offense. Yeah, you just got to make them uneasy. Mm -hmm. This is not something you have to do routinely. You just have to show them you're willing to do it, and it will start to change things. Mm -hmm. Mike Hilton, to me, is the X factor on this defense because he's going to be tasked with Cooper Cup. And I, I could easily see a path that he's tasked with being the blitzer off the end that if he can get home a time or two, might force a turnover, might be what mm-hmm. changes the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, Matt Matt Stafford is one of the one of the worst quarterbacks of all time, in my opinion, when it comes to just getting so close and then making the play that's going to ruin it for you. And this year has been different. This year, as you said, in the fourth quarter, he's best in the league. It's not even close. QBR, fourth quarter, he's made big comebacks. You know, the Tampa game comes back to the, mind. And that's the thing that would scare me, mm-hmm. is that he's been so good in the fourth quarter. That's been the home run swing for the Cincinnati defense. Mm-hmm. I could see a path. I'm not tell, it won't make a pick on this game till Friday until we pick it with uh, Asheville Police Chief David Zach. Right. I could see a path. Where early in this game, you see one of those rare exotic blitzes from Cincinnati. They get home, Stafford makes the mistake, and now you're playing from behind. And that's not where L.A. wants to be. Yeah, You do not want this ball in Matthew Stafford's hands with five minutes to go to win this game. Mm-hmm. Because I, if, if you told me going in that that's how this would go, I would favor Cincinnati by a pretty drastic margin. This is not Tampa Bay who's going to leave – the dead center wide open right that's not happening Mm -mm. that play is not coming that heroic oh who had cooper cup i don't feel like we're going to say that in this game and it is alarming to me how many times matthew stafford has needed that to win games yep he's needed some lucky breaks chuck g in the comments asks who's gonna block von miller and uh, aaron donald well that's a great question that we will answer tomorrow in the four o'clock hour we will start off with our uh with our Bengals offense against the rams defense and it's a tremendous question right it is a tremendous question we are going to uh lay out each one of the big matchups coming up for you each and every day leading up to the big day and of course we'll cap it all off on friday where we will be playing and beat the chief with Asheville police chief david zach for the last game of the year and he's gonna be in vegas he is or i mean in uh, los in angeles lo- in los sorry angeles, I, yeah. I had vegas on my mind yeah. he's gonna be in los angeles for the super bowl he so will be our on uh, on-site correspondent that's right for the super bowl that's right so we will do that uh coming up later on in the week each and every matchup will be touched on don't you worry your pretty little heads about it Coming up after the break.